The Milwaukee Bucks looked spectacular in their opening game of the season against the Philadelphia 76ers on Wednesday, as Dame and Giannis combined for 55 points, and there looked to be incredible synergy amongst the team as a whole, which to put it bluntly, was not something the Bucks possessed last season. So let's take an in-depth look at what we saw from Milwaukee in this game. The good, the great, and some potential challenges they may face this season. But before we do that, I have a quick channel announcement I'd like to make, as I'm pleased to announce the launch of the Antler Enthusiast membership right here on YouTube. I talked about this a bit in my previous video, but as an Antler Enthusiast, you unlock instant access to my complete scouting work for all 82 Bucks games this season, including the playoffs. And in order to give you guys as much time as possible to digest these reports before each game, I'm aiming to get them out about 24 hours prior to tip off. So if this looks interesting to you, become an antler enthusiast today for the low price of $1.99 a month, which for anyone that did see my last video, yes, this is a significantly reduced price but I want as many people as possible to enjoy this exclusive content. So again, if this appeals to you, just go ahead and hit the join button next to subscribe and become an antler enthusiast today. Anyways, back to the video. Um, one, one of the first things I did when I became a buck was um, I asked for Dame Giannis's and uh, Chris's assisted three-point makes. Um, so just really been looking over all of that, seeing what positions they get into offensively and um, where their outlets are, where they like to drive their spots, and basically just be there for uh, kickouts and just uh, be able to make people pay for helping. Santa, of course, Doc Rivers coached him here in, in Philadelphia. He's just one of those guys that upbeat, great spirit every single day as Torian Prince knocks down the three. Such a vital piece if they have helps of uh, being in contention this season. Prince, back-to-back -back threes for Torian Prince. Torian Prince left wide open. Oh, he, he can't miss. Uh, one thing that uh, I think is underrated for TP is that he always finds the, the open spot. You know, when you get stuck, you know he's going to bail you up. I wanted to open this video by first talking about Torian Prince because his offensive contributions perfectly complemented Giannis and Dame's gravity. Despite it being just his first official game in a Bucks uniform, Prince went 6 of 7 from the field, which was good for 16 points. And with a performance like this, you would have figured TP has been a Buck for the last five seasons, as he just always seemed to be in the right spot. He opened his scoring midway through the second quarter, as he noticed Bobby Portis got doubled near the baseline so he took advantage of a sleeping Eric Gordon and cut back door to bail out Bobby with this easy layup. On this next play, he ghosts the screen for Damian Lillard and slips out to the corner while Dame draws two on the ball, so Lillard pulls back and hits Prince in the corner. And by the time Tyrese Maxey rotates back over, it's already too late. The Bucks open the second half with a common play we saw throughout the preseason where the idea is to get Giannis the ball at the elbow. Here, Giannis is going to face up, take a couple of dribbles, and draw a couple of defenders. So Torian Prince is going to shift over a couple paces to fill in the gap on the perimeter and knock down this wide open three. And in this last clip, we have Giannis running in transition. He drives baseline and engages Tyrese Maxey's help defense which means Caleb Martin then has to cover the gap for Maxi against Gary Trent Jr. in the corner. Prince recognizes this and immediately realizes he's now unguarded, so he slips to the basket for this easy uncontested layup. So although TP's not Chris Middleton, which is who he's filling in for in the starting lineup, he makes the game so much easier for guys like Giannis and Lillard, and the Greek freak had to give him his props in the postgame. Which leads me to Pat Connaughton, who's coming off a pretty rough 2023-24 season in which Bucks fans were calling for him to be traded, including myself. But Pat looked to have rekindled a bit of his 2022 form in the preseason, which had me hopeful for the upcoming season. And in game number one, 
Pat provided some really solid minutes off the Bucks bench. And similar to Torian, he just made the game easier for Giannis and Dame. And that's all you have to do to be an effective contributor in Milwaukee's rotation. Right here, Giannis is going to bring the ball up and try to back down KJ Martin. Kelly Oubre picks up on this and goes to help double, and when Giannis picks up his dribble, he's in trouble. So Pat Connaughton makes this really nice fill near the top of the key and buries the triple off the Giannis dish. Similar scenario here, as Giannis again tries to back down KJ Martin and draws the attention of Philly's entire defense. But the moment he picks up his dribble, he's stuck. So Pat Connaughton motions for DeLon Wright to fill out top of Giannis, while he fills to the top of the key. Giannis finds him, and because Kelly Oubre is late getting over here, Connaughton explodes right past him and converts on this tough finish inside. So hopefully we can continue to see this version of Pat as the season progresses. But sticking with this theme of making Dame and Giannis' life easier, Gary Trent made a couple of plays to contribute to this as well. A common sideline out of bounds play that the Bucks like to run is a zoom action that begins with a wing inbounding to a post at the elbow, and that wing then going to set a screen for Damian Lillard so he can come off with space to catch the dribble handoff from the post. But on this play, Gary Trent Jr. knows the Sixers defense is going to overplay the Lillard screen, so he slips back door for the and one layup. The Bucks then get back into their Giannis elbow series, and after facing up, the Greek Freak takes one dribble to the left, prompting Tyrese Maxey to double team, so GTJ slides with him on the perimeter, and is going to benefit with this catch and shoot three ball. But maybe the biggest offensive shout out of the game goes to Bobby Portis, who checked in with about six minutes to go in the first quarter to a struggling Bucks offense. So to get him going, Bobby immediately scores on a few easy looks inside. All he's doing is sealing his defender and crashing the glass. And then from that point, the jumper gets going. Boom, corner three. And all of a sudden, Portis has now scored the Bucks' last nine points. Fast forward a bit to the beginning of the second quarter, and Bobby gets the seal on KJ Martin in the high post, so this is an easy turn and face bucket. And this 11 point run from Portis and about a six minute span of game time allowed the Bucks offense to take off from that point on. You know, Bobby is the one that got us passing the ball. Like when Bobby came in is when the passing started and then it got contagious. And something I want to highlight about Bobby is the fact that his jumper looks to have improved, which sounds ridiculous considering he's coming off a season in which he shot about 45% from the mid range and 41% from deep, but Bobby Portis went a ridiculous 9 of 11 from downtown over the course of preseason, which is an 82% clip, and he shot 75% from the field as a whole throughout those games. Never felt this confident going into a season as, a, in, as an individual player. The only concern I have with Bobby's offensive game is his ability, or lack thereof, to play make out of double teams. As his jumper continues to fall, the more double teams he's going to see off the catch in the high post. And Philly began deploying this strategy late in the second quarter in an attempt to slow him down. And it worked, as they were able to force him into a couple of turnovers. And it wasn't the first time we've seen Philly do this to Portis. But if he can improve upon his quick decision making out of the high post throughout the season, it'll make Milwaukee's offense that much more dynamic. And speaking of dynamic offense, I think it's finally time to touch on Damian Lillard. Because in Giannis's case, not much needs to be said. The supporting cast allowed him to dominate the game in a simple manner, which is something he didn't have the luxury of a whole lot last season. But in Dame's case, it was all about figuring out how to get him comfortable within Milwaukee's offense, and in game number one, I think I can confidently say he looked extremely comfortable. And a big reason for this is his chemistry with Brooke Lopez in the pick and roll game. Because BL is a floor spacing big, opposing defenses need to respect him and play their bigs a little higher so they don't leave Lopez alone on the perimeter. 
So every time Brook runs pick and roll with Damian Lillard, the opposing big is always forced to vacate the painted area, which is a huge advantage for Dame, especially when you consider the pickup point of Brook's screens. For example, watch Brook Lopez set a screen on Dame's defender at half court on this play which allows Lillard to gather a full head of steam attacking downhill against the slower-footed Gershon Yabusele, and this is an easy layup. Then, on this play, BL is going to set a screen a couple steps beyond the three-point line, which completely takes Andre Drummond away from the basket, so when Dame rejects, he's got a wide-open lane to the basket. Dame doesn't always like going to the rim, though especially when he can shoot from 40 plus feet out. So every time an opposing big defends Lillard in a drop coming off of Brooks' screen, he won't hesitate to pull up and lace one. And that's what makes Dame so tough to guard out of these actions. His first step is so quick that if you play him too close, he's gonna blow by. And if you play him in a drop, he's just gonna pull up. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it when his screener is a 7 foot, 38% three point shooter off the catch. So overall, it's safe to say that Milwaukee's offense was firing on all cylinders after a slow first quarter. So now, let's talk about the defensive performance. And the first thing we need to do when talking about the Bucks defense is consult assistant coach Greg Buckner's defensive scheme, which is to take away middle drives have a rim protector under the basket at all times, play physical defense at the point of attack, fight over the top of screens, limit switches, close out in a controlled manner, and most importantly, protect the paint. So did the Bucks defend according to Buckner's scheme against the 76ers? I'd say yes. In fact, the scheme was on full display with Brooke Lopez's monster six block performance. Defending a non-shooting big in Andre Drummond allowed Lopez to camp out near the rim, and he couldn't have done a better job. I think Philly could have better exploited him when they went small with Gershon Yabusele at the 5, because Yabu is a really good 3-point shooter off the pick and pop. But honestly, some of these plays are on him, considering he rolls directly to the basket, which allows Brook Lopez to stay put and make it tough for the Sixers at the rim. But let's be honest, Brook can't have a night like this without massive contributions from Milwaukee's perimeter defenders. And I don't think anyone deserves his flowers more than Gary Trent Jr., who coming in, I was a little worried about his defensive tendency to gamble for steals in the passing lanes and leave the rest of the defense vulnerable. But I only saw this once from GTJ on Wednesday, which shows he's fully bought in to Greg Buckner's scheme, as Trent did a phenomenal job at the point of attack, moving his feet well, showing his hands, and fighting through screens. He was an overall irritant who made Tyrese Maxey's life incredibly difficult all night, holding the Sixers star to just 5 of 15 shooting as his primary defender. But it wasn't just Gary, Torian Prince and Damian Lillard both did a great job of forcing their matchups to drive baseline directly into Milwaukee's rim protection. Dame in particular really impressed me during the preseason with his defensive activity, and he only built off of that in this game. Philly tried to attack him a decent amount in hopes to switch him on to Tyrese Maxey, but Dame did an awesome job of stunting on the ball just long enough for Gary Trent Jr. to recover. In the one instance Lillard did have to pick up Tyrese Maxey in transition, watch him subtly open his hips toward the sideline, and force Maxey right into Brook Lopez for this easy rejection. The only thing Milwaukee's defense didn't do particularly well in this game was protect the defensive glass, which has been an issue all throughout the preseason. As the Bucks gave up 17 offensive boards on the night, 11 of which came in the first half, which is simply unacceptable. And Giannis in particular gave up six on his own, as he just didn't do a good job of locating his man and putting a body on him. They did clean up their act a bit in the second half, 
but this needs to be a point of emphasis for the Bucks coaching staff. Another red flag I picked up on was how limited Milwaukee's rotation was. I expected a nine-man rotation coming in without Chris, with AJ Green being the ninth man off the bench. And while I was right, it seemed like his leash was extremely small considering he checked in towards the end of the first quarter, didn't do anything for about four minutes, and then was never seen from again. So as long as Chris Middleton's out, it's likely the rotation is only eight guys, which wouldn't be a problem if we were in April, but there's still a lot of basketball left to play, and the Bucks can't afford any major injuries. So fingers crossed we can see a healthy Middleton soon, because he'll certainly take this team to the next level. But let me know what you think about the Bucks down in the comments section below. And for now, that's all I've got, and I'll see you in the next one.